Hello friends, how are you? Fine. Now we have just completed the discussion of this poem that is Lands written in early spring by Wordsworth, William Wordsworth. Now, now we will look into the poetic devices. How poets use different methods or different tricks, you can say devices, tricks to make the language of a poem beautiful. So to make the language of poem beautiful, whatever the poets do, you call them poetic devices. It can be figures of speech, comparison, right? Or it can be a rhyme scheme, rhyme. And it can be lots of things and we will see that one after another today. Okay. Now let's see, the first one is, as we have seen, personification. Personification means giving, uh, you can see now, giving human qualities to non-human things. Human qualities, human qualities, humans breathe, humans extend their hands, humans enjoy. So that's what you find in lines. To her fair works did nature link. Nature is considered as a human being. And uh, she can, she, the pronoun used is she. And the her is possessive of that. Her book we said. So we said her fair works link, connecting. So nature can connect, he says. So that is connecting and things like that is done by humans. So that is this uh, attributing or giving human qualities to non-human uh, uh, non things. Nature is not human. Yet. But uh, human the sense that nature is not human in the sense that not behaving like human beings. That's the meaning when I say that. But it functions like, that's what he says. Every flower enjoys their embrace. The flower, flower is not human. Usually humans enjoy things. But in this case it is flower. So that is example for personification. The budding twigs spread out their fans. The bud, tender branches spread out their fans, tender leaves. So that is again spreading. The, it is done by humans. It's an action by humans. But here it is done by uh, budding, budding twigs. So that is an example for personification in the poem. Next, next one is visual imagery. Visual imagery means use of language to represent objects. Periwinkles and then uh, you have got periwinkles, primroses and all those. Picture-like language. When you read that, that is picture-like writing stanza three, where you have got all kind of. When you read it, no, uh, those things come. They, those things come before you live. That's the thing. Visually, you can see them. The periwinkles, the um, the primroses, and so on. So that is imagery means visual by what you can see. The third is alliteration. Alliteration is Repetition of the first consonant sound in the next to word or nearby word. For example, man has made of man. Um, 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 um. Repetition. Listen. Man has made of man. Next is belief, heaven be sent. Belief, be. B, B sound is repeated. So that is alliteration. And then assonance means repetition of vowel sounds. And the, for example, we have did link there. See? Did link did link there there. So this is repetition. E, E, A, air, air. That is repetition. I here also you can see B, B. So that is also an example for E, vowel E is repeated. Hyperbole. Hyperbole means exaggeration. If you, if you say, if you look at the uh, tree, or you say a small mountain, then you say, oh, it is greater than him, the Himalayas. So that will be a kind of 
Hadi God exaggeration. Listen, making small things, representing small things as big. It is like so. If you suppose you see a comparatively say a person who is a, who is uh, who is um, com a comparatively tall person, then you say, oh, he's a Goliath. He's like a Goliath. So that is a kind of uh, calling a person, a tall person, Goliath is fat, and also tall person, Goliath is exaggeration. He's not Goliath. That is, that's exaggeration. Very often we exaggerate these things. We only use exaggerations now. We say, how was the feeling? We say, idiot. <laughs> Isn't it? Super. <laughs> Maybe the feeling may not be even average, but if you ask me, I say, so super. This is kind of this exaggeration. Even now, these days we are only exaggerating. You know? <laughs> Isn't it? That's what the Kalaki we said now. That's exaggeration. So that is high. So then what happens? A thousand blended notes. You cannot hear a thousand blended notes. Blended mixed, we have seen that. Thousand, you must have seen some, say 50 or 20 or maybe 10. And that's the poet says thousand. So that is exaggerating. Yes. More than the real thing. More than the actual. No, not just more than, but uh, ten times greater than what is what you actually see. Or ten times bigger than what you actually see. That is exaggeration. Yes. Somebody said uh, somebody said that oh he is eating through his nose. <laughs> And the other man asked me, is it, is it possible? Ah, he's eating through this nose when I said, just below the nose. <laughs> just below the nose, just below the nose, your mouth, which everybody does. Everybody eats through the mouth, you know. What is there right? to exaggerate? So like that it can happen. Yes, then rhyme. Rhyme is similarity of sounds at the end of lines. Similarity of sounds at the end of lines. Especially part of that word will do. That is what we call syllable. S Y L L A B L. You must have come across that word syllable. So the end syllables, uh, if they are same, you say they are rhyming lines. You say. Example, first stanza you can see. I heard a thousand blended notes. One. Third line is in that sweet mood when present thoughts. See that. Notes, thoughts. They rhyme. First line and third line, they are rhyming. Then second and fourth. While in a grow, I say it recline, bring sad thoughts to the mind. No, recline, mind. Recline, mind. Very celebration. Uh, the same uh, sound, same syllables, same sound. Sounds also blue. Then you go on rhyming. Uh, that is. Uh, then. The first one we will say, we will, we will uh, give the notation A. See that? I heard a thousand blended notes A. Second line, why didn't I grow? I say it reclined. Not the same. So we said B. In that sweet mood when present thoughts, again A. Bring sad thoughts to the mind, B. So the rhyme scheme will be A, B, A, B. Throughout the poems like that. A, B, A, B. Link, think, second stanza you can see. Link, think, ran man, a b a b. Third stanza is the bower flower, reads, breathes, a b a b. Fourth stanza you find played, made, measure, pleasure, a b a b. Fifth stanza you have fan, can, air, there. And the sixth one, sense, Lament, no. send, lament, the plan, man. That is, the rhyme scheme is A, B, A, B. When you are asked to write uh, a short appreciation of this poem, if you can make a note of this poetic devices used by the poet, so that towards the end of your, uh, or the, in the last paragraph, that will definitely add Shine, luster, reason. Shine to your answer. Understand? 
If you are asked to write an appreciation, what have you to do? You have two or three sentences about the author. Then you write down briefly the summary. While you are writing the summary, you want first class, first point, then you learn few lines by heart. And at the appropriate place, you quote those lines. Understand? <laughs> you quote it. And you give a note on the poetic devices used like this. A paragraph. That will be a perfect answer. If you have time enough, you can also write about the background and the philosophy. Two things are very important. One, uh, if you forget all, all the points, all the points about the other, you should not forget two points. One is Wordsworth, is a poet of nature. Secondly, he is a romantic poet. And if you can remember, write the third point, his philosophy, pantheism. That means he believes that the same divine soul, the same divine spirit runs through all the things created by God in this universe. That is, I told you, Tunil and Tudumbilum, they were Medikino. You have heard of that song, you, you might remember that song. See, that's the thing. Everywhere there is the presence of God, pantheism. These three points, poet of nature, romantic poet, romantic poet, poet of nature, and his belief in pantheism. That's enough. Okay, then background we can say, uh, one point if you want, if you can remember, that at the time when he was writing this, the French Revolution was going on. The last lap of the French Revolution, last part of the summer. 1999, uh, the French Revolution, almost we can say, coming to an end. The poem was written in 1798. So in, in a heart of heart, he was, his heart was grieved, he says. It grieved me. That's a very important thing. A short question can be asked, so why the poet is grieved? What man has made of man? What man has made of man? In the contrast is there. Nature, there is love and friendship and all those things. But in man, hatred. But the, but the, the uh, problem is, or what you can say, the, the, the critical point is, in both the same divine soul is present. Yes. That I think would be a very good. But remember to learn at least three or four lines or a stanza, perhaps, and then insert that in your answer at the appropriate place, appropriate place, suitable place. And it will be the perfect answer. You will get 100 out of 100. Bye.